Well, hello and welcome everyone. We are here again for another Minecraft Education Edition workshop from the Cobblestone Collective. Um, students, teachers, as pretty usual, we're here a little bit early, so we always like to just get warmed up a little bit before we start. And of course, we have some Earth Day questions for you. Happy Earth Day, everyone. So just to get us warmed up, Emma, do we have an Earth Day question for all these folks out there? We sure do. It is coming up right now for you on the screen. Hopefully. There Hopefully. we go. Excellent. So if you've been to one of our lessons before, you know students don't use that Q&A. We can't keep up with that Q&A students. Leave that Q&A for your teachers. If they have questions, teachers, go ahead and post in that Q&A. But students, we have a form just for you where you can communicate with us. You'll see the link there, the cc.page slash earthform8. Go ahead and type that into a browser window. If, if you've got a computer in front of you and you're watching up on the screen in front of your class, awesome type in the cc.page slash earthform8 or if you're watching us on your computer just jump over over to another tab type that in and just listen to our voices with the question so the question is what are you wearing today to celebrate earth day you'll see me I, like i'm wearing a little bit of yellow well, I, I think I probably could have done better, um, but you tell us, what are you wearing to celebrate Earth Day? Uh, you're going to meet Jesslyn. Jesslyn's going to be doing a whole lot of shout outs, and so I think we need to go over to Jesslyn. Jesslyn, what are you wearing today for Earth Day? Uh, well, today I'm, I've got my co-pilot here, Juniper. She is wearing her sun hat. We're excited to head out to the park later today, but I'm also wearing my love your mother shirt because you know i'm mom so you should always love your mom and take good care of her mother's day is coming up but also uh our mother earth and um i'm really passionate about just taking care of the earth sustainability i'm so excited this is going to be so fun today fabulous and jesslyn jesslyn's going to be the one monitoring that form and she's going to be able to give some shout outs if you have put anything in there jesslyn do we have anyone telling us what they're wearing for earth day yeah, Jacob says he's not wearing anything specific, but that doesn't mean that they are not celebrating. Uh, Rhea is wearing natural materials. Some people, uh, Deacon, green and blue, Jaya, green. Uh, Marie is wearing flowers today. Um, yeah, so green t-shirts. Ooh, just wearing lots of colors because the earth is so colorful. So lots and lots of different... People, oh, uh, a Grim is wearing a green shirt with an earth on it. Love that. Yay, so, so great. And it's so great to see Juniper here as your co-pilot. I think she's heading out to the park, isn't she? So she won't be able to be your co-pilot for the whole thing, but we wanted to make sure that we got to see what Juniper was wearing. So thank you, Juniper, so much for being here. All right, students. Well, you know what? We're still going to just make sure that everybody gets that form loaded up. So... If you're just joining us, take a moment, jump into the cc.page slash earthform8. And we may as well add one more question in there. How about what else are you doing to celebrate Earth Day? So you're all here with us, going to be doing some cool Minecraft, celebrating sustainability and Earth Day. But what else do you have planned? Maybe you have something else planned with your class. Maybe you have something else planned with your family. But put that in the form. Let us know what's your name and what else are you planning for Earth Day? Let's jump over to, I want to jump over to Emma. You're going to meet Emma a whole lot during this lesson. Emma, what do you have planned for Earth Day? Oh, definitely one of my favorite things to do on Earth Day is to just get outside and you're going to see very quickly that I live in a very highly forested area. Um, so definitely a nice walk through the trees will be on the agenda today. Oh, absolutely. All right, Jesslyn, do we have any students telling us what they're doing for Earth Day? 
Yeah, so first of all, I just wanted to say uh, Emma said that they are wearing some secondhand clothes because it's better for the environment. And I love that answer, Emma. I am super into also buying secondhand. Super important to think about sustainability as well as the materials. So we've got some people going to the beach. Uh, Rob's going to the beach. Um, Camille might be playing some video games. Um, we have got, ooh, Rhea is walking home from school instead of driving. Love that. Lincoln is going to go around town picking up garbage. Cadence, at 7 p.m., they are turning off all the lights. Uh, working in the yard with plants, says Elle. Uh, Ingrid is going bike riding. So many things. This is incredible. So many really, really, ooh, Patrick, watching composting. Brooklyn is turning off their lights for the whole day. So many good answers. It's so great and I sure hope that those answers have inspired others of you that maybe haven't thought of what you're going to do for Earth Day. I love that. We're going to turn off all of our lights as well. What a great suggestion. I hadn't even thought of that, but now we're going to do it. Well, I think we should officially get started with that. I'll just quickly introduce myself and you probably won't hear too, too much more from me. My name is Michelle Armstrong. I'm one of the co-founders of the Cobblestone Collective. I'm based in Calgary. Uh, it thrills me to be able to work with teachers and students, helping just learn more all about different technologies and this week, sustainability in Minecraft. So thank you to Minecraft for making these workshops possible. Uh, we're thrilled to learn along with you, but with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the lady of the hour, Ms. Emma Cotter. Awesome, welcome and thanks team. I'm super excited to be joining you today for Dependable Force. Uh, so we are jumping into December, uh, Dependable Force. Again, here's your team. There's myself, Emma. I'm from Victoria. We have Jocelyn from Vancouver and Charity just outside of Calgary, I believe. Um, it is very likely you are participating in learning from or near the traditional territory land of one of the many indigenous groups across Canada. I acknowledge that I'm presenting from the beautiful traditional territory of the West Saanich people on which I'm able to teach, learn and explore and share my passion of technology. Um, so just a thank you and um, allowing me to have this opportunity and you're gonna see very shortly, it's a beautiful, beautiful land. I uh, remind you today that today is a pause, rewind and play. So at any time, if maybe we went too fast or if you want to see something again, that's the best part about this. You can pause, you can rewind it, you can check out again. You can also play it again in the future um, because we hope that you'll really enjoy it. The rules for today, uh, be open to learning, uh, appreciate your local forest, and three, explore, build, and have fun. And just remember to use that form to interact with us today. There's gonna to be lots of opportunities to do so, and we are so excited to get started. So we're gonna jump right in. So, hey, Emma, hey. oh yeah, hi, Michelle. Hi, Emma. I'm just gonna dive in two things, and you just mentioned it, but I wanna mention it again. We have a whole lot of kiddos using that Q&A. We can't respond to you kiddos in that Q&A you need to go to this form that Emma's going to show us again. That's how you're going to be able to get shout outs and communicate with us. Jessalyn, do we have some other people joining us today? Yeah, we've got, so this is a very active form today. So we had somebody say, Jackson said they were going to be baking an earth cake. And I am always down with any excuse to have cake. So I think that's a really good idea, Jackson. Uh, Sophia is heading to the forest to clean up garbage. Um, and now we've got people answering this question of where they are joining from. So we have got um, Mrs. Thompson's grade six class from Toronto is in the house. Uh, Rashawn is really, really, really excited. Uh, we've got Gavin says hi. Sophie is saying hello from SVS. Ooh, we've got a question, what does a dependable forest mean? And that is definitely going to be answered a little bit later, Crystal. Uh, Alvin is here from Toronto. 5C from Sexsmith, Alberta is here. Um, everybody is really excited. There's a lot of excitement going on in here. Lots of exclamation marks, excited to be here uh, 
playing with Minecraft today. So, ooh, Roshan is here from Scarborough, Toronto. Jaden from Glendon, Alberta. Ooh, Tay and Atlas are here from Reno, Nevada. They're outside of Canada. Very exciting. We've got Jake from Skaha, BC. Rhea from Winnipeg, Canada. Wow, uh, I love how many people are joining us today, Jesslyn. That's so exciting. Yeah, super excited. There, this, this, I can't even keep up. This, this uh, form is just going and going and going. We've got people from all over the place here. Ooh, we've got Fabrizio from Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, sure. And Mr. Robson's class in Guelph uh, really wants a shout out. So, hey, shout out to Mr. Robson's class in Guelph. Uh, Farah is here from Ms. Johnson's class in Toronto. Uh, ooh, uh, Enya says. And thank you so much, Enya, for tell for typing out how I can say your name. That's really important that we say names properly. Uh, from London, Ontario, and they have been here from day one this week. What a fun week, full of all of these amazing activities. I am so grateful for this team and this opportunity. Logan, very excited for Minecraft, here from Bowmanville, Ontario. This is getting me so pumped up. I'm like, look at all these new friends that we're making from all over Canada and the world. This is so cool. What a cool opportunity. Erin from Fort Coppell, Saskatchewan. Emma, are you ready to go back to I am totally ready. So thank you. Awesome. We're going to just dive right in. We want to just maximize our time with you today and, of course, give you some build time in Microsoft. So really quickly today, I'm going to tell you all about Dependable Forest. I'm going to tell you about forestry in a very special dear to place dear to me is Vancouver Island. I'm on the very west coast. I'm going to share you exactly what it looks like here. I have called upon a local expert of Sean Nicholson. I'm going to tell you a little bit about forest in my province of British Columbia. We are going to do a little tour of a scenic height in our sustainability, <laughs> sustainability city and of course get to the build challenge. Now we're going off the grid today. So in Vancouver Island, where our loggers work, it's off the grid. There's no Wi-Fi. So I've I've actually gone out and got the footage for you today. So we're exploring today where the Wi-Fi is weak. And a dependable forest is a forest that is reliable and exists for generations and generations because it's going to be because it has been carefully looked after as both a vital resource and a delicate ecosystem. Um, this picture is from Tofino. Um, these are all pictures um, taken uh, by people I know. A little vocabulary to start is sustainable. So it means you're able to use something without completing, uh, depleting the resource. Hector, pay close attention to this, but this is a specific unit of measurement when we talk about force. Specifically, it's 100 meters by 100 meters, but that is a full hectare um, when we are, you know, getting trees to use for, for lumber and different things. We do think of forestry in the terms of hectares. Conservation is the careful management of a resource and biodiversity are all those cool species that live in a specific e ecosystem. And believe it or not, right here on Vancouver Island, we actually have a quite a few rainforests and we have incredible species like we have lots of birds and insects, we have bears and we have lots of biodiversity here on the island. Now, what does it mean for a forest to be sustainable? It means that it is managed. We are taking care of these forests so that my children and their children and their children's children um, can in enjoy these forests for years to come. And I'm going to show you carefully, but we have some really famous trees here on Vancouver Islands. But just so you're warmed up for today, I'm going to ask you a question and I want to see if you can name a product or a couple of products that come from trees. So again, use that form, the cc dot page forward slash earth form eight. Let's see if you can guess some of the products that we use. And there's actually lots. Some of them might surprise you. So go ahead, let us know in that form. And this is also not including, um, I know earlier in the week, some of you might have done sustainable food. Um, that's not even including all the food that grows on trees that we consume. So these are the actual products uh, when a tree is cut down that we are able to make from them. So just Emma, any Emma, this form, yeah, it's going crazy over here. We've got, <laughs> um, I just wanted to, 
point this out. We had one student, I forget, I can't find it now their name, but she's joining from India. So <gasps> that's pretty cool. That's <laughs> um, really cool. All right, we've got lots of paper, yet yeah, rubber. Um, we've got, I mean, lots of people asking for shout outs. Ms. K and Mr. D, some of their kids are having uh, technical difficulties, so they're screen sharing here. Um, we, tables, paper, yeah, tons of different answer. Food, ooh, maybe one of my most favorite things to come from trees, maple syrup, yes. <laughs> Um, apples. Yeah, some are, yeah, maple syrup. Absolutely. Great answers. Um, are you okay if I go and share some of them? Yeah, sure. All right. So in our forestry products, and, and these are not all of them. There's even more, but we, we know we have paper, we have clothespins, the crutches, the barrels, the fences, the docks, even diapers and Kleenex and magazines. All these would not be possible without trees. So this is just a few examples. Deodorant. Who would have thought that comes from products that are grown in trees? I read that at first and I couldn't even believe it, but it is true. All these things come from trees. Amazing. Um, keep using that form and we will check back with you. I am going to take you to where I live and I am on the very, very, very far up west part of Canada. This is the island. It's not actually a very small island, um, but we are, of course, in British Columbia. And in order, Jess and I actually live close together, but she's over here on this beige part. And I am actually down here in this green part. So in order to connect to each other, uh, we have to take a 90 minute ferry. But we're traveling to Vancouver Island. Come join me. I'm super excited to show you around where I live. Um, so first of all, Vancouver Island forests, they are rich, they are diverse. Um, our most common trees that we log here are the Douglas fir, the hemlock, and the red and yellow cedar. So these are some local forests um, just around me. This one here in the bottom center um, is a Douglas fir, the one above it taken by a drone. But you can see really quickly with our trees, we have lots of different elevations and waterfalls and boardwalks. And these are all right here taken on the island, which is really neat. Um, so Vancouver Island logging is a huge part of our economy here. It is integral. Um, just know they are very selective on the trees that they cut down to supply our local area. I'm, I'm going to talk about it a little later, but um, forestry in British Columbia is about 30% of our economy, so it is huge. But when we also take down trees, we're really careful so that we are minimizing our impact on our local ecosystems, our streams and our rivers. Um, we don't log close to those um, because we would be damaging the vital, vital ecosystem because out here, uh, fisheries and salmon is also very important. So we do not go too close uh, to our coastal line. I am going to be taking you on uh, a personalized tour of this log store in Ladysmith. And this is about one hour north from me, but I'm going to tell you a little bit more. But why this log sort is important is this is the middle stage between the trees and the lumber yard. And in your sustainability city tour today, you're going to start at a lumber yard and you work your way up through a scenic hike. But these log sorts are the in-between. So stay tuned, you're going to get some live footage of this in just a second. Also on Vancouver Island, where I live, this is probably about 45 minutes from my house. We have a giant pulp mill and it takes little pieces of our trees and it basically converts them into little pieces. It's hard to see, but in this picture on the far right, those little pieces are transported by barge because we're on an island. We have ocean, the Pacific Ocean all around us. And then these are um, converted into those paper products, the cardboard, the envelopes, the paper. And uh, we supply this to places all over the world. We have a couple famous celebrity trees that I want to tell you about. On the left, we have Canada's gnarliest tree. We have celebrity trees. Who would have thought? This is about a two hour drive from where I live. It's 100 kilometers and it basically has the most recorded knots and, and folds in a tree. So we call that our gnarliest tree. 
On the right, um, we have a cedar. It's in the Pacific Rim National Reserve Park. So that means there's no forestry happening in there. Um, we do protect our old growth forest here. And they have named this tree the Chiwat Cedar. It's named after the lake right beside it. And it's believed that Chiwat is close to 2,000 years old. So that tree, of course, is very heavily protected and it cannot be logged. But a 2,000 year old tree, um, that's incredible. And lastly, just dependable forest here. We have all different stages. We have our old growth rainforest with boardwalks. Uh, we have our mature growth and mature growth means a tree that has grown for about 40 years. And we always have our new growth because in BC, we actually plant three trees for every one that we take down, which makes it both a dependable and sustainable forest. So we always have those three kinds. Um, Jocelyn, do we want to give a couple shout outs before we dive into our, our really cool first hand tour of the log sort? Yes, I would love to. Celine, um, it would make her day uh, if we could just, or make their day, if we could shout them out in Mr. Manella's class at St. Catharines, Ontario. Um, Akshana, nine years old. Um, Miss Halliday's grade four virtual classroom. Hello, so glad to have you here. Shout out to Mrs. Ramish. Uh, a bunch of your students have asked for that shout out. Uh, yeah, tons of shout outs here. Mrs. Ramish, let me see here. Hey, Ooh, Mr. Caruso, grade four, five, six classroom, Toronto. Yeah, hi. And we also had a teacher over in the Q&A as well. Thank you to the 60 boys watching us from Crescent School in Toronto. Uh, so welcome to all of you guys. Oh, I am loving our audience today. Thank you so much for connecting. Um, let's dive in. So we, because we're going off the grid with forestry, we couldn't have a live expert because there's just no Wi-Fi where they are. So I reached out to my brother-in-law, Sean Nicholson. He's an integral part of the forestry here on Vancouver Island. He works all over the island and he's connected to multiple companies. So thanks to him, we are able, and it's going to be on the next slide, uh, we get some first-hand footage of the log sort. So he's the president of ProCut Lumber, but he's also the general manager of the Katso Logging, uh, which is the indigenous word for big lake in the couch and area. So huge thanks for Sean for arranging this tour. So I want to just tell you roughly where this VIP tour is. And there's something really special about Lady Smith that I want to share with you. So I'm down here in Victoria and Lady Smith, if you count, is one, two, three, four dots up. So we're going up the island a little bit one hour, but Lady Smith is very special. It is located on the 49th parallel. So a little geography lesson for you. If we extended the Canada US border right across into the island where I live, it would cross directly at Lady Smith. So it's actually a pretty special place. Also, a little off topic of forestry, if you've ever watched the new Sonic movie, where they filmed that opening city is Lady Smith. So a little fun fact for you. Let's dive into our tour. So I'm going to play it. I'm going to maybe just check the sound and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it um, as we play it. And we're going to start in and just kind of get an overall view of Procut Lumber in Ladysmith, British Columbia. You can see that it is connected to the beautiful Pacific right on the coast. And this is referred to the deck. And the deck is the sorting area for all the trees that come in. And they can come in by logging trucks or they'll come in via barges on the ocean. And you can see beside the dry log store is a mill and they process it into lumber. So here the trees are getting ready to be put out onto the ocean for storage. Um, they're put into these stacks and you're about to see some really cool footage of these stacks and heavy machinery in action.
And what an incredible shot we we're able to get there, um, loading the logs onto the ocean for storage. Uh, so they either come in or out to the ocean, whether they're coming in to be sorted or going out for transportation. Uh, this little, I call it the little tugboat, but he or she goes around in the ocean and they arrange all the logs, they sort the logs. If there's any stray logs, they pick them up. Uh, but you can see that they're preparing it for the heavy machinery uh, to come in and lift it out into this giant pile. So check it out. So the logs are being lifted out of the ocean. These have probably come up from further um, north. Um, a lot of these logs have come over from Sydney Island, so another local island. They're being lifted up. They'll be sorted into tree type, uh, where they've come from, or the different places that they need to go, whether they're going to go to a mill or a pulp mill for further processing. And here you can see where they're, we're back on the dry deck sorting the logs. They measure them. Um, they'll also maybe chainsaw up the logs, um, depending if there's an unhealthy spot, they will take it out in the log to maximize its quality. Um, they'll spray paint it, so to keep track of where this wood has come from or the different companies, um, so as not to accidentally uh, mix up someone else's logs. Uh, but you can see that they do lay them out. There's some cedar in there. There's some Douglas fir in there. And here you can actually see the workers measuring it. Uh, if there's some unhealthy wood, it will be taken off. And that red spray paint indicates where the logs have come from. And just some, some other first, uh, just some footage of them measuring the logs and maximizing that value of the tree and ending with the mill next door where a lot of these logs are processed. I hope you enjoyed your VIP tour. Just some key learnings that I took away from Pro Cut Lumber. It was just an incredible tour that we actually have a law here in BC that only 1% of British Columbia is logged annually. So we are really careful about our trees. Um, and I mentioned this during the narration as well, that we have trees coming in from all over our, um, our island, lots from the north end, which would be Pork McNeil, central area, Port Alberni, and the trees come into this log sort either by the ocean um, or by a truck, which is really neat. Um, really quickly, Forestry in BC, because I want to jump into our sustainability tour in just a minute. Um, just some fun facts. Um, we are just a, word, a world leader in sustainable forest management. So we own 94% of our forestry land here in BC, which gives us full control to determine where, when, and how these forestry uh, is used. Um, teachers, we're going to connect you this video as well. It's an amazing five minute video um, that does the journey of a tree in BC as well as this graphic. So we plant the little seedlings, they turn into saplings. Um, they take 40 to 50 years to be a mature tree. Um, they are carefully logged. We even sometimes log um, the smaller trees to make room for our larger trees. Um, they then go into the mills and the log sorts, our lumber yards, and then of course use things to build like our homes. And I was really curious how many trees it it takes to make a home and on average for a 2600 square foot home it takes 44 mature, uh, mature trees which I thought was really interesting and really quick here's four sustainability practices that we use in BC so we use forest biometrics so we carefully study each forest um, for climate change um, the species and, and the impact that it might make we have also uh, forest inventory so we do careful rotations and keep track of what forests might be ready and um, we do monitor the growth I always like this is in one of our parks here but I always love this tree I took this picture because um, it almost looks like there's a little face in it and um, we've also come up with a really cool tree seed um, that basically allows us to grow trees faster and they're more resistant and it also promotes a higher wood quality and lastly um, we are always watching and measuring that forest health 
um, protecting them. We There's bark beetles that can be really dangerous and pathogens. And so we do our best um, to take care of our forests. Um, Jessalyn, maybe a quick question here, um, but maybe if any of our students have heard of any other sustainability practices, there are lots more for our forests. And then we are going to dive into our sustainability city tour, which is incredible. So let us know in that form if you've heard of any other sustainability practices um, to create those dependable forests or for the for your local forests around you. Awesome. And Emma, while we're waiting for those answers to come in, there's some students asking, well, why do I need to know this? Why, why is she telling us all about trees? We're diving into Minecraft right away and you're going to learn even more about sustainable forests. And then we're going to be asking you to do a build challenge in Minecraft where if you are just paying attention to Emma, you're going to have a real good chance of winning a contest that we're going to tell you about. So, uh oh, if you weren't paying attention to all that great info and in Emma that Emma gave us, maybe a good chance now. Pause, rewind, ah, get all caught up or you can watch it later. But yeah, super cool info, Emma. I'm excited to see what kids put into Minecraft based on all of that. Thank you. Fabulous. Um, so Jesslyn, do these students are super sharp. I love that they're all over the world. We have kids that are going to live in forest areas like me, but we're also going to have lots of kids that live outside of these forestry areas. But what are some other sustainability practices um, that we can do to make sure these trees exist for years and years? Well, uh, Jacob tells me that in Ontario they have tree protection zones. Yeah, where they yeah, actually they protect the trees. Protect they cannot be can't be logged. Absolutely. Uh, lots of protected areas, not cutting down more trees than we need to. Uh, Harrison says cut ash. And uh, Shaheen says, I think I've heard somewhere that they plant a few trees for everyone they cut down. Yeah, Emma said that too, right? That was, was yeah. it trees are planted for everyone that's cut down? Yeah, I love that they have that in place and that's governed here quite heavily in, in British Columbia and on the island. But I also like that only 1% of our trees are logged. So that's really important to maintain that inventory. So when you're able to take your 1% that will continually for years and years have those trees available. Yeah, absolutely. And I also just want to correct a mistake I made earlier. I said one of the teacher's names wrong. They let me know that it is Miss Ramish, not Ramish. So I'm so sorry. Shout out to your class. Um, I do believe my name is tricky to say, so I do really believe it's really important to say names correctly. So thank you for correcting me. Emma, back to you. All right. So without further ado, we need to jump into the sustainability city, sustainability city because I think it's the coolest thing ever. Like Minecraft and Microsoft, you are absolute geniuses. So let's dive in. Let me tell you a little bit about it and then I'm going to show you how um, how to navigate through it. So in this sustainable city, you're going to start at the lumber yard and you're going to tour yourself around. It then is going to lead you up to a path. And if you get to the top, and I hope you get to the top, there's a beautiful overlook of the entire sustainable city. And you're going to see what a mature 40 year of forest looks like. Um, so you're going to go up. It's going to look like little paths like this. The first step, now I know a lot of you maybe have joined us earlier on in the week, and if so, you're probably going to know how to get there. But if you is, if this is your first session of the week, it's really important that you log in with your Minecraft EDU account. So with your school account, you'll be clicking on new and featured and then sustainability city. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my Minecraft here. So when you're logged in, your screen is going to look like this. So teachers, this might be a really great time to just pause this recording and do a quick login check with your students. Reminder, it does have to be your school accounts. So when you're logged in, it's going to look like this. You will simply click on new and feature and then find sustainability city. So we're going to dive right in there. And the last thing you'll need to do is when you see this screen, is go into the top right hand corner where it says create world and it's going to launch you right into the sustainable city. The step by step instructions are also in that resource slide deck 
and it's going to transport us directly into kind of the school classroom building to start. Um, like I said, a number of you are probably already familiar with this because you joined us earlier on for the sustainability city. It does just take a minute to load, but reminding you to log in with your school edu account. You will click on new and featured. You will click on sustainability city and then it is going to launch you into a page. Um, that will look like mine really shortly. Of course, mine says not responding, but it will be up in just a minute here. I might give it a little refresh. Um, Jocelyn, do we have a couple more shadows while I get my Minecraft up and running? Yeah, absolutely. We've got lots of people looking for shout outs here. So how about Mrs. Hall's grade four class shout out? And we've got Tyler. Uh, shout out to Tyler. Shout out to Miss Phillips class and Mrs. Zubrika's class from Glen Haven Senior Public School in Mississauga. Uh, Mrs. Hatcher's class. Maya asked for a shout out. Uh, how about a shout out to Miss Duckett and Miss Tancheva or Tancheva? Tancheva, I think. Um, yeah. Lots of shout outs to everybody here. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Spriggs class is joining all together and they have lots of good answers here. Um, and so, yeah, shout out to Mr. Spriggs class. Emma, back to you. Perfect, so thank you for that. Sorry, I, I had this all logged in, but of course, whenever you go to present something, um, it doesn't work the way you'd like it to. Um, but you can see that I am logging in with my school account. You'll use your school email and then plop your password in. Mine says Sandwich Schools because that is the district in which I work. Um, so you're going to log in there. I guess this is a great time to review where you're going. So we are clicking on New and Featured. We are clicking on Sustainability City. We are clicking in the top right, which says Create World. It is going to load up our Sustainability City and we are going to start our tour. So I'm going to let you know where the tour starts, how to get started, and then I'm going to give you about 10 minutes or so to explore on your own. After you've had some time to explore, I'm going to tell you about the build challenge. Um, and like Michelle said, there's some really cool swag to be one. We do highly encourage you to participate in the challenge and we'll tell you a little bit more about that later. So if you are totally new to Minecraft, don't worry, I was new like a month ago, but I've fallen in love with Sustainability City and taught myself. So I am just working strictly um, on a keyboard. I don't have a mouse or anything. So if I move my trackpad around, you can navigate around and the commands are on your left. So I'm gonna hit W to move forward. And when you get close enough in Minecraft, you can see the labels to come up. So I've just walked up to this teacher in my sustainability city. And if I right click, this menu comes up that allows you to go to all the different lessons. You will be clicking on lesson number four. So really quick again, you're gonna walk up, um, S is backward, but you're gonna walk up to the teacher in your sustainability city. When you see the label over top, you are going to right click on your mouse or your keyboard and we are going to lesson number four. Now you are going to see, I'm going to just call this the orange glitter, the orange Earth Day glitter. You're going to follow that glitter. So I'm going to use W on my keyboard and this door can be a little tricky to open. And like I said, I am newer to Minecraft. Um, so you're going to hit a right click and it's going to open that door and you're going to keep following these orange glitters and you're going to follow them around. Keep following them around and I have to point this out because I absolutely love it. Does anyone make an observation? Do you notice how in the sustainability city they drag, they move you over so that you carefully cross the road on the sidewalk? I just have to point that out. I absolutely loved it uh, when I first so they want you to cross on the crosswalk um I love how they uh they always take their safety precautions so you're gonna follow you're gonna go across the sidewalk um mine is little it's still thinking a little bit we're gonna follow those orange glitters 
Uh, we're going to turn left here. So hopefully no one's just jaywalking directly across from the school. The entrance to the lumber, lumber yard is through this little pathway here. So we're going to keep following these orange glitters. And the first stop is going to be right here at this employee of the lumber yard. The arrows will tell you where to go. Get up nice and close where you hit the label and right click. So he's going to tell you, he's going to tell you, welcome to the lumber yard. If you would like it read to you, there is the immersive reader function right here. If you click on it, it will load and it will read all these different captions out to you. You can choose to use their immersive reader or choose not to use their immersive reader. It is totally up to you, but it will pop open. It'll look like this. It'll give you a few tips when you first open it um, and you'd hit play. Welcome to the lumber yard. Here is where the town gets all the wood building product it needs. The logs come from a sustainable forestry project nearby. How about you go on in and check out how the whole process works? Perfect, and then you can simply exit out of there. So you're gonna keep following. I'm not gonna do the whole tour. I wanna um, obviously have you do it, but then you're gonna keep following those orange glitters around. Explore the lumber, lumber yard. It's gonna take you on a scenic hike and we're gonna check back within you shortly. So right now, you are going to log in. You are probably already logged in. Remember, you have already creating. You're going to start in that lumber yard and follow those orange glitters around. We're going to join you back in about 10 minutes.
Students, you only have four minutes left of exploring. Four minutes of exploring. And then we're going to tell you more about your build challenge. All right, students, I hope you had some fun exploring Sustainability City. I just need to get rid of I see Michelle in the top right hand corner. Hi, Michelle. Um, I am going to just minimize Michelle, though we love seeing you on the screen. Um, can I just mention how I love after each Sustainability City tour, you can get back on the bus. You can see I'm on the bus here. Oops. I'm looking down at the bus driver's foot. So you can go back on the bus. And if you right click, um, it will take you back to your lesson. Take me back to the town. I absolutely love the part and it'll be like, Huzzah! the lesson completed. Um, how fun is that? So Michelle is going to go ahead and um, share her screen. Um, to hopefully minimize some of the lag time uh, with the Minecraft. And I'm going to tell you about your build challenge. 
which is awesome. Oops. Do we want to do build challenge? Do we want to ask this question after they did their exploring? <gasps> yeah, sorry, I totally forgot. Let's, um, yeah, I have a question. Um, what is one thing you noticed about exploring? You know, we went on a little scenic hike. We went in the lumber yard. Um, a beautiful scenic hike. I give really mad kudos. I look at all the building that time that went into building that. It is incredible. So what is one thing that you noticed um, doing this tour? Did any of you check out that incredible viewpoint uh, at the top of your scenic hike? Um, and what's not to love about those electric buses that you can hop on in and then go back to town? Um, let us know on that form. What's one thing you discovered about dependable force? Well, I love that hike personally. <laughs> the hike was awesome. I took a picture for Instagram at the top, so I made sure everybody <laughs> knows in my well, this is kind of weird. In my like digital real life, <laughs> what I was doing in my not real life on Minecraft today for Earth Day. So that's kind of like a weird little circular thing. <laughs> um, I've got a couple little shout outs here, if that's OK. We've got Ms. K's class at KKSA. Uh, shout out to you. And then we've got a little bit of like a shout out competition happening. <laughs> it sounds like between Mr. Manella's class and Ms. Duckett and Ms. Sanchiva's class. So um, yeah, shout out to all three of those classes. I don't know who's winning, sorry if uh, I'm ruining things, but um, some of the things that people noticed, um, let's see. Marcus, you are right. Whoever made Sustainability City is an absolute legend. You are <laughs> right. <laughs> the more time I've spent building in Minecraft, which I started about a year ago with some of my students, uh yeah that was that's crazy <laughs> uh dante says it takes a long time to make a full tree yeah it takes a really long time to grow a tree and um roshan says a lot of people were doing construction there it's very beautiful uh mrs nash from gatestone says they noticed that they were replanting trees um noticed natalia says notice that the people really protect the forest well and love the forest view um harper says the hike and yeah i agree with you Hi harper on that hike i loved like uh emma was saying you know crossing the crosswalk there's a path made through the forest so you're not trampling on the flowers that are planted to the side or you know all the different biodiversity that's happening in this forest you're not ruining it you're saving it so that others can enjoy it in the future uh crystal from mr spriggs class says it looks really real in the forest love the forest the bus is cool too and the hike was amazing um lots of logs of wood divot says and ooh. Arland says, I learned that electricity is used to solve a lot to solve environmental problems. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's good for now. This <laughs> we could go all day just giving shout outs from this forum, but why don't we continue on, Emma? Oh, absolutely. I love how engaged all our learners are in this session today. Wherever you're joining in the world, what's not to love about a scenic hike? in the forest. Um, beautiful, beautiful. So your build challenge today is going to be a scenic hike. Um, that picture is actually like five minutes from my house. A lot of in, in Vancouver Island, you know, as Jocelyn was saying, to protect our forests and the old, old growth and the biodiversity, we have these incredible trails with boardwalks and bridges and keep those in mind for your build challenge. So it says, now that you are familiar with the forestry industry of Vancouver Island and British Columbia, you've taken a VIP tour of Procut Lumber Corporation, and you've learned about sustainability practices for dependable forests, um, you are now considered a dependable forest apprentice, and you have been hired by the Global Dependable Forest Corporation to help design and grow a hike through a dependable forest for future generations to use and enjoy. So your goal is to try and get to the master builder level three. Now, if you're brand new to Minecraft, it's totally fine to just be on level one. We're not grading you. 
This is not marking you. You can do a scenic height in any capacity. So this was just like a quick start I did. I took a little screenshot, but just to give you some ideas to get started, I have, you know, my stone trail. I have some dirt blocks. I've put in some trees because in Minecraft in the inventory is biodiversity. They have lots of different trees that you can put in as well as, you know, some smaller shrubs and other plant materials. So level one is to do a scenic hike that is 25 blocks by 25 blocks. So in the mathematical world, that's 25 meters by 25 meters. In the Minecraft world, it's tw block 25 blocks by 25 blocks because one block in Minecraft is one meter. So for the apprentice level, it's a single pathway, maybe a couple kinds of trees, one level of elevation, and just consider the placement of your plant life around your trail and perhaps an access point for future loggers. That's for the apprentice, 25 by 25. If you've maybe explored a little bit in Minecraft and you feel a little bit more comfortable, the artisan, which is our middle level, level two, is a 50 meter by 50 meter scenic hike. So that's 50 blocks by 50 blocks. Uh, I'm encouraging you to have a trail though it goes in more than one in direction. I'm encouraging you to increase your biodiversity to three kinds of trees. I'm encouraging you to increase your elevation to at least two blocks because here in British Columbia and Vancouver Island, we are very, very mountainous. Our land is not flat. It's not flat anywhere. <laughs> um, so lots of different elevations and some things to consider is maybe a fence to protect because um, I forget the name in the form, but protected forests and protective parks are very much a thing. One of our sustainability practice. So think about protecting your forest from in in intruders. And finally, the last level, the master um, master builder is the full hectare. So on our scenic hike, we learned what a full hectare is. And that is 100 meters by 100 meters. In Minecraft world, that's 100 blocks by 100 blocks. Um, we're not going to be super picky that it's a totally straight line. You know, you can make it approximate, but you're going to go for the full hectare. You're also going to work to increase your um, complexity because here in British Columbia, I told you we have lots of rainforest. So on our hikes and our West Coast trails, we're going to have bridges. We're going to have boardwalks. You could even have like a bridge going over a stream or river because we have lots of outlets through our forest, lots of water places. And I know you've learned about water earlier this week, but water has to flow out of our forest and into the ocean. Um, and also including at least three levels of elevation and if you really want to go pro, remember when you got the tour of Pro Cut, it was on the ocean. We use the ocean to transport our trees. Maybe your forest is going to be on the side of an ocean so those barges can bring in the trees and transport those trees. Those are the levels. So I think now um, I'm just going to do, oh yeah, there's the instructions here. One important thing, I know earlier in the week, if you did other sustainability challenges, you built kind of outside the city, but within the sustainability city. And I was thinking about this. Those Minecraft people have done such an incredible job. They're already seeing the kikes all around. So I think we're going to create our own template for this challenge. So we're going to move outside of the city. Um, because I was flying all over Sustainability City and you know what? It's just so beautiful. So we're going to create our very own scenic kite outside. So we are, and I'm going to show you how to do this in just a second, but instead of hitting new and feature, we are going to hit play and we're going to do new templates and we're going to go into blocks of grass and we are going to start designing. Um, remember that it's E for inventory. You have lots of different materials to choose from. There is no limits on the materials that you choose. So really quickly, um, step one was your 25 by 25, one elevation, one trail. Level two uh, was 50 by 50. You have maybe 
um, your trail maybe sags off a different way and you have at least two levels of elevation and the master builder level is the full hectare, 100 meters by 100 meters with three levels of elevation, biodiversity, be thinking about how those forestry experts can carefully get into and out of your forest um, to enjoy it, but also to use it for economic purposes, transporting those trees out. Let me show you maybe how you can get started in Minecraft. I'm just making sure maybe, um, Jesslyn, can you just confirm that we are looking at Minecraft on my screen? No, yep. Emma, you'll have to um, go ahead and take oh. control of screen sharing on your side. And while you're doing that, teachers just know you are going to get an email with all of the information for how your students can submit their challenges uh, to the contest. And this is a Minecraft contest. Minecraft is going to be giving away some super cool swag to our finalists and they're going to be highlighting the winners uh, at ISTE, which is one of the world's biggest educational technology conference. So teachers, all those details are coming your way. Uh, and whether you, you choose to do the first or second or third level that Emma gave you, as long as it's got that creativity. You're using your, your concepts from sustainability. Yeah, you all have a chance at winning that. So good luck. All right, perfect. So just confirming we are looking at Minecraft. We are looking at Minecraft now. Oh, perfect. So we're going to switch gears. We're going to actually build outside of the sustainable city so that you can create your very own unique and authentic scenic hike. So instead of going to new and featured, we are going to go to play. And in the bottom left, we are going to hit create new. We will click on templates. So it was play, create new, templates, and we're just going to go with blocks of grass. So we're going to go ahead and hit play in our blocks of grass. And this is going to give us a fresh uh, kind of canvas for our scenic hike. And if you're new to Minecraft, I'm going to show you how to place some blocks. If you are already experienced in Minecraft, maybe you've been building earlier this week for the different challenges, you know what? You go ahead and get started. You know what the levels are. But if you are new to Minecraft, you are going to hit E for inventory. And all these things are going to come up. One of the ones that I might suggest to start with is dirt and you click and drag to put it in kind of your materials. There's probably a better name for it, but this is your inventory, the materials that you are allowed to use. Um, so you could do dirt. Um, I am maybe going to put in wood as if I was making a little boardwalk. So maybe I want to put some wood in there. And the other thing I want to bring to your attention, especially because we're doing a scenic hike, is they have a category here. It's the fourth one over, and that's kind of all your plant materials. And if you see a plus sign, like under saplings, I think we learned today, so there's seedlings and then those saplings. So those are our younger trees. If you hit the plus sign, you're going to see all different types of saplings. So you have oak, spruce, birch, uh, jungle, acacia, and dark oak. So you have lots of different options for your trees. We are going for biodiversity, so you might want to put a few different of them. Um, they don't have some of the ones that are native here to British Columbia, but that's okay. We are going to add some different things in there. So I already have a few things. And the other thing I might want to add to my inventory uh, is water because I will definitely actually I might put it as I might put it as ice to look for a stream. All right, so I'm going to exit out of my inventory. Um, you can see so some of you are going to be using um, iPads. Some of you are going to be using Chromebooks. If you have a mouse, it can be a lot easier. I'm just doing it on a keyboard. So when I hit number one, it does number one in the inventory. So um, you see the dirt. If I hit number two, it switches my material to the wood and I'm going to use that for a boardwalk. If I hit three, it switches to my tree. So I'm just going to start with the dirt. And you can see that I have that black square. 
And when that shaded, if you hit right click, so I'm just going to right click. Once that block is shaded, um, if you right click, it will build that block. And you, of course, can use the keyboard command. So S to back up, uh, to go forward. And I am just going to work on building my different elevations. Now, like I said, I'm newer to Minecraft, so a lot of you will probably be able to build faster than me. And I love that. I love that you are pros. If you see that I use my left click, it means I accidentally demolished. I, I, I got rid of my block instead of adding my block, and I actually do that all the time. So I can right click to fill it in. So again, E for inventory, go ahead, start placing your blocks, start doing any challenge that you would like, and maybe we'll just check in with the form and see how everyone is doing. If not, we are going to give you about mm, close to 20 minutes to start building for your challenge. So Michelle or Jesslyn, is there any questions before we give some people some build time? Yeah, uh, Emma, some people are just wondering how they're going to see their, how we are going to see their builds and when the builds are due. And I think that that information all will be included in uh, the information coming to teachers. So uh, you don't have to worry about that right now. Just think about the building part. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So Ellie did say that if you open the inventory and go to the top right, uh, there's two icons and that's where you can press them. She was just giving, a, they were giving you a little bit of help there, but. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so, oh, and then they were wondering if they have regular Minecraft, can they enter the contest on that as well, or is it just um, education version, Michelle? Uh, me and Michelle can tackle that question just for the, for the details of the contest. Yeah, you bet. Um, by all means, if you want to build in, in blocks of grass, just in regular Minecraft, you can. The beauty of having our um, education edition, we jump in there, we've got all of those NPCs inside Sustainability City. We can go back and ask them questions. Um, so absolutely use your personal version, but definitely if you have education edition, harness the power that you find in there for sure. Hey, do you know what? While I've got the mic, let me just jump in because um, I have to I have to say um, Yamil, you're awesome. Yamil wanted to just shout out his teacher, Mr. Putnam. So I think Mr. Putnam, Yamil and your whole class is super thankful that that they are watching. But that goes to all of you teachers out there. Shout out to you uh, for allowing your students to do Minecraft during class time. That's wicked cool. Absolutely. So I think without further ado, let's just give you some time to build. So I'm just working on my elevations. I do have a cow running around on my scenic hike, but I'm going to work on my elevations. I'm going to work on adding a trail and then I'm going to work on some biodiversity. And this build challenge goes until May 14th. So we are not expecting you to be done in 20 minutes. I'm not going to be done in 20 minutes because I know lots of people can build way faster than I can. Um, but this is just a starting point and brainstorming some ideas and we're going to connect back with you uh, in about 15 minutes.
I know we're still building, but we do have just a couple kids struggling there. And if you do have questions or you are struggling, don't hesitate to let us know in that form. But um, Khaled, blocks of grass, look for blocks of grass. It should just be that the main um, world in Minecraft. So double check there. If you're still having troubles, let us know in the form. Angel, great question there as well. Um, right now we're building our scenic hike. And so you want to build your scenic hike based on all that cool information we got from Emma and from touring Sustainability City. Hey, Emma, we do have a question, and I wonder if you might be able to show us in your demo there. Um, I think some students haven't gotten their self in creative mode, so they don't have all that awesome inventory that you have. So I wonder, can you just show students how to get themselves into creative mode so they have unlimited resources? Yeah, for sure. Um, Michelle, can you just check that I'm, I'm, I'm you can hear me, correct? We can hear you, we can see it, it's perfect. <laughs> okay, awesome. And that's a really good point to make because I actually just, because like I said, I am newer to Minecraft and I really wanted to fly. <laughs> and I learned that you can only fly uh, in that creative mode. So you would click under settings and under the personal game mode, I think it defaults to survival mode. So in your personal game mode, you wanna click creative. So one more time, I kind of when you're building, I hit escape and then it's going to pop up uh, the settings and you'll click on settings and you'll go to creative mode there. So that's a really great question. You also have to be in creative mode in order to fly. And if you're on a space, um, sorry, like a regular, like I'm on a PC device in order to fly, you're going to hit the space bar twice and that will allow you to go up. Um, if you are more experienced uh, with Minecraft, you can see that I'm going block by block, um, but if you certainly know how to do fill commands and to go from there, then absolutely. I won't be showing you how to do those today, uh, but just know that if you know how to use them, uh, those are other great build techniques as well. So um, we're just gonna give, maybe we'll give you the two minute whisper warning uh, with your scenic height. Remember this challenge doesn't end today. You go, you goes until March uh, 14th. Teachers, just if you're interested in the build challenge, all the information is on the Cobblestone website. It'll give you the details as, as well as the registration form. Um, you can see that I have kind of the, the, the foundation to my scenic height. I'm going to um, start fencing in to protect it. I have a couple different types of trees, so I'm starting my biodiversity. I have a few different elevations, and if I go over here, so W to move ahead. Again, I'm just using my keyboard for Minecraft today, um, but you can see that I have the start of my pathway. I'm going to do the wooden, I, I'm kind of picturing as if a boardwalk because a lot of our Fours, especially with our celebrity trees, you're going to find them through with boardwalks. Um, but I have a pathway through this scenic hike. And of course, use that sustainability city for inspiration. Their hike 
was gorgeous. <laughs> it was totally gorgeous. Um, so keep adding lots of different things um, to your hike. My next part I might do is work to add the coastline uh, because of course living on an island here, I am surrounded by the coastline on basically every um, every direction except for north <laughs> um, because I would be traveling up the island, but every other direction uh, around me, I would hit the ocean within a, in, within a few minutes. And Emma, uh, Gabby has just given a really good tip. So this is for you and for anyone else. She said they say that if you want to go into creative mode, you can press enter and then type in forward slash game mode creative and then you would be in creative mode totally and for those you can use um that chat for those modes as well but always love those pro tips and maybe now would be a great time to ask if we maybe switch screens but we don't have to but one of the questions i'm curious is is what sort of things have you added to your scenic heights so far i'd love to see kind of what you have starting to grow or build over there in your city. And while we're waiting for some of those answers to roll in on what you have created, what have you put in your scenic hike so far, uh, we've got a couple other shout outs to do while I wait for those answers to roll in. So let me see here. We've got a shout out for from Sherelle for Ms. Camano's class. We have a shout out to Ms. Chu. Thank you, Ria, for letting me know how that is pronounced. Uh, Tiana is asking, could we have a shout out for Mrs. Nash's class? Uh, Abdul asked for a shout out for their teacher, Ms. Sykes, grade five. Um, Camille has asked, do you have to enter the challenge or is it optional? Uh, that's something to talk to your teacher about. So we are presenting this to you. Your teachers will get all of this information and you should just talk to them, to them about that. We have got another shout out here. Um, actually, now we've got things rolling in. So um, Nicole says they've just started with the base of dirt. Uh, ooh, Amarissa in grade five is adding a river with a bridge. Uh, Jake added a bridge and a river and lots of trees. Ooh, Denise, a cute river or lake, and there's tropical fish in there. I love it. Maximus is starting to build a forest. Ingrid has put in a river and a cobblestone and gravel path. Ooh, love that. <laughs> um, P says they made a lake. Sydney has a waterfall, lots of trees, a stone pathway, and a lot of elevation. Oh, I really would just love to see all of these. This is so cool. <laughs> um, Aaron has started some, put some trees and starting to build a path. And, um, ooh, Rhea is building a mountain and putting in trees of different ages so that it's, there's lots of different um, sizes and ages of trees. Really cool. Uh, and a few people have also given this tip. I'm going to say here from Zoa and uh, Lennox has also said that if you use bone meal from your inventory, right click on the ground, it will grow grass and flowers. And if you use bone meal on saplings, they grow into trees way faster. That and, you know, is such that's a good pro, sorry to interrupt that. I love that pro tip. That is awesome for biodiversity. Yes, awesome. And other awesome ideas coming into the Q&A. This is Mr. Put Putnam uh, wonders, wow, maybe we could like recreate Stanley Park in Vancouver, like have a real life example. Uh, I think that's a fabulous idea. I wish I could go to Stanley Park one day soon. And that I will go for you, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, we'll go for it. Yeah, Stanley Park is definitely closest to Jesslyn, but um, recreating a local scenic hike is a great piece of inspiration um, for your build. So we are so excited to see what you can come up with because with a scenic hike, your possibilities are endless. Like you could have a really steep elevation, you could have lower levels of elevation, your biodiversity, you could be even um, if you're a logger like my brother-in-law Shaw Nicholson that gave us the tour earlier, 
You could even have patches of your scenic hike that are in the different stages of growth because that's what we do here on Vancouver Island. If you look around when you're driving, you'll see different forests and different stages of growth. So lots of cool ideas. I've got one, a couple more things here too to say from the form. Uh, wait, where was that one? This is going crazy. Uh, Patrick has built a bridge over a river with a beaver dam and salmon. Oh, I love it so much. Zoa, adding a pathway with trees, flowers, and grass, and also going to add a hill with a river and a bridge. Jonah's path takes a lot of turns. Um, ooh, Lennox is adding a make your, making a grow your own tree area. So creative. You all are making me really, really miss being in the classroom right now. <laughs> I am blown away by these ideas. These are better than I ever could have hoped for. So thank you, students. Keep them coming. We love hearing about them. And we just have a few minutes left. So I did want to give an opportunity. Maybe these are some more shadows. But if you had any questions about Dependable Forest um, before this session ends today, let us know in the in the form. And now, like I say, I'm not a tree expert yet yet but through this presentation i have learned so much about forestry and being able to connect with the west coast loggers directly for them to share their expertise with me and to be able to share a little little glimpse into their life with you which is challenging to do because like i said they're off grid they're not even close to wi-fi or a computer. They are literally deep in the forest here in Vancouver Island. So if I can answer a question for you, um, let us know. Or if you want to share a learning from today, or if you want to tell us about your scenic hike, you let us know. Hannesy, I see your request for a shout out for Mrs. Nash's class. Absolutely. Um, more things coming in here too. Um, waterfall. Okay, Reese says they have a waterfall that leads into a river under a bridge and a path. Ooh, I've also fenced in my scenic hike already. Cool, fenced in hike. That's awesome. Yeah, building mountains. Yeah, okay, so Mrs. Hall says that some are finding the 100 by 100 very challenging. And yeah, as as a teacher, I've always said to my classes, good, that's awesome. Um, and to my kids, I always say, you know, that's a good thing that we are kids that can do hard things. And so good for you challenging yourself. Um, maybe try one of the, the smaller challenges first to kind of build yourself up, but go for it. That that's really good. That's evidence that you're learning. Um, let's give a shout out here to Dr. Lucky's class. <laughs> Let's give a shout out to the Karen Kane School of the Arts. Ooh, next to a cool Mimico Ravine. That's awesome. Um, all right. And then, yeah, so some more people. I think that we've got people stuck in Minecraft doing some building. So, um, yeah, I think Michelle and Emma, I'll turn it back to you. Uh, but yeah, this has been such a pleasure. Ooh, quick two more shout outs. Uh, Amarissa in grade five has asked for a shout out for Mrs. Forrester's class and Jake wanted another shout out. I'm going to say the name right for Mrs. Ramage's class. So Emma, back to you. Oh, thank you so much, Jocelyn. Um, I can't thank you from the enough from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for joining us today for Dependable Forest. I, heard, I hope you kind of enjoyed your little sneak peek into forestry here on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. Um, teachers, there are a couple really cool videos in this um, presentation. If your students have more time to create, they'd be great to kind of show on the screen. Um, but thank you so much for joining. Um, Michelle, closing anything um, you want to add before we finish today? 
Just another thank you so much to you, Emma, for all of this great information and walking us through Minecraft. Um, Jesslyn, for all of those shout outs. Charity, who you haven't been able to see, she's the one who's been making sure that you see all of us. So Charity, thank you for being behind the scenes there and really truly teachers and students. Thank you all so much for being here with us and we hope to see you in another lesson sometime soon. You guys all have a fabulous rest of your day.